everybody, welcome back to Auto Scholar with Mr. B. I'm Mr. B. Today we have this 2019 Volkswagen Atlas and we are doing a rear pad and rotor replacement on this vehicle. It is a 3.6 SEL premium model, so it's got just about all the bells and whistles this car has. And it has an electronic parking brake in the back, which we need to uh, deactivate with our scan tool before we change our brake pads. So the scan tool I'm using is a snap-on uh, Zeus scan suite. It's a, a very expensive scan tool. You don't have to have one quite this nice to do something like this. They do make uh, the Autel scan tool that works very well with these. Uh, mine's just not updated up to this level yet, so I'm using my Zeus that is. Uh, so you do need a scan tool to put this vehicle into the service mode for the rear brakes. If you do not, you can damage the rear calipers and you can get the system out of whack and your parking brake will not work after that. So always remember, uh, if you don't have a scan tool, this may be a job that you want to take to somebody to get done that does have a scan tool. So we are adding a aftermarket set of pads and rotors to this. They're ceramic pads and they're cross-drilled and slotted rotors. And as always, remember, if you have cross-drilled and slotted rotors, you do have a left one and a right one. Don't get them mixed up, but they won't work as well. And I'll show you that when I expose the brakes in the back. So let me go ahead and get this vehicle up in the air and get the rear uh, tires off and we will proceed from there. Okay, so I have my uh, OBD2 connector plugged into this Atlas. It's a 2019 Atlas. I think I said 2018 before, but it's a 2019. So I'm gonna go ahead and load the vehicle. Uh, this is a US vehicle. And again, any scan tool with uh, bi-directional control should be able to work. Continue. And we are going to go into, let's see, service resets and relearns. Uh, replace disc pads up here. <laughs> and let this load. A little bit of a glare on the screen there. Okay. We're just following the instructions more or less. All right, so we look at the procedure here. With the snap-on scan tool, it's a little bit more difficult to do than with the standard scan tool. So missions on throughout the uh, procedure with a suitable charger or support unit attached. Please also ensure part brake is in the off position. So we need to have this off before we start. So the key needs to be on the whole time this is done. So we need to put something on there to keep the battery up to par. And so I'll put my battery charger on here and keep 12 volts going to the system. All right, so I set up a uh, charger here because the key has to be on. If the key's on, there's really no way to turn these daytime running lights off unless you activate the brakes for the parking brake. And we can't do that because we have to have them off to change the brake pads. So we'll keep a, uh, a charger on this just to make sure that you still have voltage and it doesn't die in the middle of this uh, brake change. And uh, if you got a jump pack or something like that, extra battery or something, just put some jumper cables on it just to make sure that, uh, you know, this takes, you know, 30, 45 minutes to do. You don't want your battery to run down because the key has to stay on for this whole procedure with this scan tool. Okay, so now we're gonna open calipers for pad replacement. Click that on there now. Calipers are now open. Continue with pad replacement. Be aware that you'll still manually need to push the pistons in. Continue from here when the pad replacement is complete. So let's go ahead and get these pads changed. Okay, we're gonna start with the driver side rear. And you have your anti-rattle clip here. You just gonna need to pop it loose comes out right here, it just fits in these little holes right here. And once you get that out of the way, you're gonna see some plastic caps back here. All right, so you're gonna pull these off. 
just a little plastic cap here. And you want to get those out of the way. And after that, you will have seven millimeter Allen heads back here. And you may have to move the brake hose out of the way a little bit. It's a little aggravating to get to. And they're not that, they're not that tight. When we go to put these back in, I'll explain how you torque these back down. So you may need a little bit lower profile of a seven millimeter right here. See if I can go find one. All right, so what I was able to do to get to these is because the frame, the swing arm here gets in the way, I was able to take my socket that I normally use, I put an eight millimeter wrench on it and I was able to get in there and get at it without uh, any problem at all. They're not that tight. So we're gonna take both the top and the bottom off and we can separate the caliper from the bracket. So now what we're gonna do is we're just going to sure this pin is out underneath here all the pins are released and you have to try a little bit and that comes out just like that so you only want to do one side at a time you don't want to really let this hang you can prop it up here Don't want to let it hang by the cable or anything all right so now we got to get the rotor off but first we need to take uh this right here off it is a t30 and it comes off fairly easy i think these torque down to like eight newton meters or something like that so it's really a whole lot and then we can take this off. We don't even have to take the bracket off, which is fantastic because the bracket has single use bolts on it. So again, you do not have to take this bracket off. So now we're gonna slide this back in. And I want to show you something real quick because I wasn't paying attention. These are actually on the wrong way. See, as this turns, you want these to be swept the other way. So let me go get the other rotor. I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. Okay, so we're going to add the new rotor here. It take a little finagling, but line this up with the retainer. And if you're using these types of rotors, definitely want to make sure that these are swept back from the inside. That way, when the, when the rotor's turning, it's getting the water away from the center of the rotor. Okay, very important. And if you get it wrong, then you can have some serious issues keeping water out of your brakes. A lot of people think the slots are for uh, you know, performance, but they're really just to keep water out in between your brake pad and your rotor. Okay, now we got this back on. You need to make sure if you have any fingerprints or anything on this, go ahead and clean this with a shot of brake cleaner and make sure everything is clean before it goes back together. Okay, so now we just have to compress the caliper in. Uh, these don't twist in or anything. They just go directly in. 
like so. And once we get that compressed in, we're ready to hang the pads. You wanna make sure that this is cleaned off very well and that your pads that you, you put on here, they're well lubricated. Okay, so you have two pads here. You have one with a spring on it right here. This one is gonna go on the inside and this one's gonna go on the outside. So what I do is I more or less just make sure that I have a little brake lubricant or anti-seize on here, right on the edges. And this is on the outside pad, so we'll put a little bit more right here. You don't wanna glob it on. You don't want it too thick. We'll hang that right there. And again, this is gonna keep the pad from making any knocking or squeaking noises. And you wanna hit where the caliper piston goes. Not too much. Slide it back in. And now we are going to reinstall our caliper. We're gonna tighten up the bolts. Okay, so these torque down to 35 Newton meters, top and bottom. And now we're gonna put in our anti-rattle clip. So these can be a little bit difficult sometimes, but normally I can get them in with my hand just like that. So just work from hole to hole and only do the bottom first. Now slide them in the top. What this does is it keeps the caliper from rattling around in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side and I'm gonna show you how to uh, unlock the brake system and we'll be done. Okay, we got, we got the uh, other side done now. I'm gonna continue. You can go back into the car, close calipers after pad replacement. That's the uh, second option over here. The car will run its basic settings. Caliper's now been closed. Continue to complete function. End of the test. And we're good. Let's go check it out. Okay, so there's a couple of things that we want to do before we drive the vehicle. First of all, you need to make sure that the emergency brake is working, which I just uh, took the battery maintainer off and cycled through everything. No codes, nothing's going on. So everything worked as planned as far as the contracting the pistons of the parking brake and putting them back out. Everything worked fine. So now we need to torque the lug nuts to 120 Newton meters, which is the specification for that. And we need to pump the brakes. So we have to pump the brakes up and make sure that the brake caliper is uh, hydraulic part of the brake caliper is pressed out against the brake pads. That way uh, we don't have a dead pedal when we're leaving the shop because that's uh, definitely gonna be a problem. If you've ever done brakes before, this is a, a common procedure. So after you do that, you need to check the brake fluid, make sure the brake fluid condition and everything is good. I do have videos on brake fluid condition. And I'll put up here for you guys. If you wanna check your brake fluid, um, I'll put those videos up there and down in the description. So after that, we should be good to go. Just drive for a couple of miles, slowly drag your feet on the brakes from time to time. That way you can get the brake pad time to set in and break into that brake rotor. And uh, you should be good to go. Uh, if you hear any noises or anything like that, you know, you may want to take it apart. Just check again, make sure your brake, uh, your backing plate for your rotor is not rubbing up against the rotor or you don't have a piece of hardware that's out of place. So if you learned anything from this video, please give me a like or subscribe to the channel post a lot of European car um, stuff along with hybrid vehicle, electric vehicle, a lot of other things. And we're starting some new uh, stuff as far as theory videos and stuff. So I can teach you guys pretty much the, the down to the molecular level on how some, how some of this stuff works. So again, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, BK, uh, a lot of other video um, and content out there on those uh, channels. So check me out there, just look for Mr. V. And be safe, take it easy, and we'll see you next time on Auto Scholar with Mr. B.